It is November 2022, and we're here with some cards that are at their all-time lows. The most expensive card on this list is around $45, and our cheapest one is like five bucks. We're talking about cards that are good for the collection, cards that we think you should probably have at least a single copy of. Hopefully, one of these is something that works for you. The video starts right now. highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I am martial arts expert Jean-Claude Van Damme. I'm Taika Waititi, sort of phoning it in sometimes. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. It's a weird time in MTG right now. We have a lot of people that are kind of bearish on picking cards up. Well, we're not saying go out and spec all of these. We're not saying brink uh, break the piggy bank and go all in on buying treasure vault like we're about to talk about if you don't have a copy it might be worth it first up we're going to talk about a card called treasure vault treasure vault came out in adventures in the forgotten realms and we also got the dungeon module version if you are interested in that you know artistic expression of the card but treasure vault is an artifact land it can go in any deck there's no color identity to it Right now, this card is about $5 or less, and it started a little bit higher than that. Treasure commanders like Vazi or Jolene from Capenna, Kalane from Forgotten Realms, general artifact commanders, Alibu from Strix, or newly uh, uh, Yesha from Brothers War. This has been popping up in a lot of Yesha decks as well. I think Treasure Vault is one that if you haven't grabbed a copy, it's gotten cheap enough now that there's not really much further down this can go. Uh, this card came out and it was around like a $10 card and now it hovers at around the $5 price point. So if you're looking for a land that's just going to allow you a turn to do some uh, crazy ramping, do keep in mind that that ability on the land uh, is not at sorcery speed. So you could do that at EOT to make a bunch of treasure tokens and get yourself set up for a pretty big turn. Next up, we have Mana Drain. And this is a card that a lot of people know this ends up being a mythic and master sets. It's a very powerful card originally printed in Legends. It was an uncommon. Well, now many years later, it is a mythic. And for two blue, we're countering target spell. We're adding a bunch of mana in our next main phase. What's funny about this card is since it's been reprinted, it's kind of just like tanked down to this $40 area. You know, we're talking about double masters version here, iconic masters. All of these are around the same price. The, Com the Commander Legends version as well. Big adjustment over the years here. Used to be more than a $100 card. Yeah, super powerful card that was hit by scarcity mostly until, like Jake said, the reprint train started a rolling. There's not really ever been a better time to pick up Mana Drain. And since we just saw this in Double Masters 2022, and this will be a theme throughout this whole video, it's unlikely that we see it super soon again. And so that price will eventually start to climb back up. But I'd say right now it's low risk if you really want to get a very powerful counter spell. Next up, we've got a commander land. And I got to tell you, Battle for Baller's Gate did a really good job at lowering the price on some wildly commander relevant lands. Reflecting Pool was one of those. Reflecting Pool is a, around six to eight bucks right now. You can get some copies as low as like $4 if you're looking at the base version of Baldur's Gate. A couple of dollars more, you get the extended version. And in my opinion, the extended on this art in particular looks even better. Originally a Tempest card. This one was scarce for a long time. We saw it in Tempest, popped up in Shadowmoor, popped up in Conspiracy, but it still just wasn't around enough, available enough, as Commander exploded in popularity. Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate absolutely murdered the price of this. This is at a beautiful, beautiful price to pick up. Very low risk. You could grab multiple copies of this one at this point. It's so low to be able to throw them into multiple commander decks because it's it's just a very strong land. Yeah, this was above 30 bucks at one point. And if you read the card, it's really good. Unless you're in like a heavy land destruction type meta, it's essentially a dual land. It's essentially right. minimum. It's essentially a free a, a minimum. Yeah, it's essentially a city of brass with no downside. It's Sometimes just very it's a second command tower in your exactly. deck. It's which just is a just command so tower. Right. Yeah. 
So definitely a card that you should have in your collection, at least a single copy, not financial advice. Nothing on this channel is financial advice, but this is kind of a no brainer, especially like as we get more and more commanders that are like five color over the years, this is just one of the cards that you're gonna want in a deck like that. It's gonna be a complicated mana base, and this is a nice cornerstone to uh, a, a little MTG real estate collection. All right, next up we have Plaza of Heroes, which is a card from Dominaria United, and this was a card that was pre-selling above $10. I remember these being around like 14 when it first came out, something yeah. like that. You could see in pre-sales, they got kind of high there on the chart. But what's really interesting about this is um, right now it's at around the $6 price point. You could probably find copies for around five if you do some digging. It does seem like a very strong card, but the exile on it, I think, holds it back a little bit. But it is an oh crap button that you can hold back for your commander, which right. seems really good. You can pick up near mint foils of this for like $9 right now on TCG player. It's kind of ridiculous. And look, I think that most people saw this land out of the gate and they were like, this is a commander staple. It's going in every deck. And that proved not to really be true. Mostly on the internet, I'm seeing it pop up in like Jota decks, Dahada, obviously, Shannid, Radadabric, any legendary matters, really. That is where this land really, really shines. But I do think in some decks, it's going to have a place because you can always cast your commander. It's a command tower for just your commander. Always. It's getting like with a, an it's getting, That's right. It's getting standard play too, which is interesting. So despite decks wanting it for standard, the price seems to be kind of low. This kind of speaks again to the bearishness in the market. This is a good card as well. I know it's not a card that goes in every deck. The more colors you have in Commander, the less you're going to want this card, right? You're just not going to have the, the flexibility to put it in. But um, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting to see it, uh, see it dip. Next up is a Mythic from Double Masters 2022, and that is Food Chain. Food Chain has been scarce. Food chain is scarce no longer. If you go back and watch one of the earliest, maybe the first or second episodes of great pickups with us, food chain was in there because it was sort of starting to drift down in price. But at that point, it was still in like that $40, $50 range. Well, that was a video that was made before we knew it was getting a reprint in Double Masters 2022. And this reprint has tanked it. It goes back to what Jake was saying at the beginning of the video. Most of these, we really try and suggest cards that are not going to have a ton of risk involved. We're trying to hit cards that are at their lowest. And right now, Food Chain, specifically the base copy version from Double Masters 2022, you can pick up for under $20 near mint very easily right now on TCG Player. This is high power EDH right here. This is CEDH. You want to build a CEDH deck? There's a couple good options that revolve around food chain. Yeah, it's one of those cards that is a combo centric card. It is a high power card. It being around the $20 price point, even if you haven't built a finely tuned, super competitive commander deck, owning a copy of this card is not a negative, in my opinion. It's something that you can play around with. It doesn't need to be a super sweaty card. It is a super sweaty card, but you could play it in a way that isn't. So yeah, very low risk at $20 on a card that is a staple. Do keep in mind that CEDH is a format that proxies are welcome. So there are probably people that are proxying this card. This is a card that has definitely tanked in price when we saw it on the list. You know, the list copy, just looking at the chart here, uh, you know, the list copy has trended down from around like the, the $70 range. This has just trended, trended, trended down as well and this is the old art which i actually prefer the new art let's be honest the old art is it's cool but a little bit lackluster um yeah big 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 downturn for this card the the um list version is 33 dollars next up we have sensei's divining top and this is another card that went through the super reprint uh, apocalypse that came with double masters 2022 not saying that set was an apocalypse that was a beautiful set but it did tank the price of cards, which is really good for the players. 
What's crazy is I'm seeing a near mint Sensei's Divining Top from Eternal Masters on eBay for $17.50. Now these cards, this card is such a powerhouse. It slows the game down in a big way. So you, you really got to know your deck and make sure that when you're using top, uh, you're rearranging quickly and you know exactly what you're doing. Um, or otherwise, players might be a little annoyed with you, but it is a very strong, very powerful card. It allows you to kind of control what's coming up in your deck, at least to a certain extent. Uh, just very strong for, for the mana cost as well. And it has trended down to a remarkably low price. On April 26, 2021, an Eternal Masters top was $75. The average price was 80 bucks. And that was April, May, 2021. Big, big adjustment. And this comes with a non-reserve list card. This is a good example and a good lesson in always sell the rip. If you had had extra copies of this card and you had sold at that peak when this card was scarce, when people needed it before it went through the five reprints that came with Double Masters 2022, you would have been able to convert it into a more sensei's divining tops that you could ride up the average as the card goes up in time from not being reprinted or b you could have just converted them into other cards or just cold hard cash what's crazy as well about a card like this is uh at this point with hasbro and the uh, frequency of reprints man i just wouldn't even hold extras of cards it just seems like high risk but at this price seems like low risk sub 20 sign me up there are multiple completed sales on tcg player of under 20 dollars. this is a card that was in that 70 dollar range as recently as march of this year it's just another great example of how well double masters 2022 drove down the price of some very desirable playable cards i think that this is a very low risk price to go and get yourself a top if you don't have one. Phyrixian Altar is the next card on our list, and this is a card that we've broken down pretty deeply earlier in the year on the channel. This is a card that when it gets reprinted, it sort of trends down. Last one was in Ultimate Masters. Prior to that, it was Invasion. So the time between reprints on these has been pretty significant. Now, with the Double Masters 22 reprint structure that we've talked about so many times, you're getting your borderless, you're getting your base, you're getting your foil etched, and it's driving those base copies down. But this is a card, in my opinion, that has a very high chance of recovering eventually. If you look at the Ultimate Masters version, as recently as January of this year, this card was above $80. And now you can get a copy from Double Masters 2022. Completed listings coming in 26, 27, 27. This card is always going to be relevant and it's always going to be powerful, quite honestly. It took the community a little while to find this card. And once they realized how strong it was in EDH, it drove the price up to above 100. And around May 2022, you would see that this is the card. This is probably around when it got spoiled that it was going to be in Double Masters. And if you do look at the chart on MTG stocks, you will see a massive, massive knife down. Uh, almost in a matter of days between May 30th and June 6th, the card uh, dropped from 90 to 85. And then from June 6th to June 13th, it dropped to 71. And then it went to a big drop off on the 20th, $50. And since then, it, the even the Ultimate Masters copy has trended down to the $30 range. So if you had had Alter, you could have sold that peak before the reprint and rebought three of them. Just think about that. This is something that very few people put the time in to learn how to do, which is if you want to have those copies in your collection, learn to see the cards only as money, and then you'll be able to grow your collection. Uh, you know, what's better, one Phyrexian Altar or three Phyrexian Altars? It, it's just gone through a price adjustment and it's going to take a while for it to trend back up so keep that in mind as well well what can we say about jace the mind sculptor other than you know it's a powerful planeswalker it's really good 
it's one of those cards that has uh has been iconic in the game and now it is very cheap god it's not even good enough in modern to hold a price point it just kind of is bottomed out that's why we're talking about it today uh the all-time low on jace is pretty much right now it's like 50 bucks you could see surges in popularity that come with announcements of modern unbannings. You can see uh, it's just a little top heavy when you put it into super sweaty formats at four. It's just a little bit slow. But if you don't have a copy of it and you do want a copy of Jason Mind Sculptor, there's no time like the present. That's really why it's on this list. It's a wildly iconic card. You know, I think everybody sort of wants to own a Jace the Mind Sculptor if you're a big collector of the game. And if you haven't ever, absolute lowest price this card in any version has ever been in the modern era. Obviously, way back in the day, prices would have been different. But right now is a fantastic time to pick up this iconic card that is just going to hold price to some degree because it's called Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yeah, it's played in Modern. It's played in Legacy. I mean, like, Merktide wants it. Uh, and the thing about it is they don't want, like, four copies of it. That's the, that's where a little bit of the price is held back. Whereas right. in Standard, when it came out, it was like, oh, you want four of them because it's pretty much going to do everything you need to do to win the game. Uh, modern, highly tuned format. Legacy, highly tuned format. So... The top of your curve needs to be stellar, and it's and Jason Mind Sculptor is, but even then, you can't have too many four drops in those uh, low to low to ground decks. Next card on the list is Micaeus the Unhallowed. We haven't seen a version of this since Ultimate Masters, excluding a secret layer drop that we got. But we've got this card all the way down to the eighteen dollars or less range. Base copies of the Ultimate Masters or the list versions are selling for like $16.99 pretty consistently over on TCG Player. Do you want a win the game combo? This is 50% of the cards necessary to make that happen as long as you know how the combo works. Oh, that's right. Joel getting in with a nice dig. What's really fun about this is this is one of those cards that was $3 for so long. It did nothing in 2013 going into 2014. God, there's people that probably in 2015 were like, oh my God, it's getting up to the $7 range. I should probably get rid of my Micaeus. But yeah, that undying is just so brutal. And then as we get into really honestly 2020, 2021, we see a big uptick on the card and that's just that's probably with the growth of commander players seeing you know once you resolve this all of your stuff is so much more difficult to remove and then yeah the secret layer i think really really did this i, I think secret layer really killed the price the list and that's rare list that's reprint. rare that secret layer yeah. does that to a card like this but yeah november last year this card was over 50 bucks now you're I think getting the list for... hit it hard too yeah, yeah because with ultimate masters being a master set you would think that would have been enough to neuter the price, but Ultimate Masters came out, you know, a little while ago at this point. Um, you know, 2019 or, uh, yeah, I believe 2019 or late 2018 was Ultimate Masters. So, yeah, I mean, even with that big reprint as Box Topper and then as a regular Mythic in the set, to see it like from the list and Secret Lair really take that dump is a, is a big deal. I think 20 bucks is probably, you know, when we're reviewing Mythics, man, when we're reviewing mythics, mythics that are highly desirable are not going to go through the biggest corrections. So I think this is probably going to stick here down at 20 and trend up slowly over time. I don't think it goes much lower than this. Just a little backstory. It wasn't exactly a dig at Jake. It was a dig at kind oh. of both of us. We had the yeah. win in a two-headed giant at GP Vegas, Command Fest Vegas earlier this year. We had... Yeah. Mike and Trike on the Micaeus the Unhallowed and Triskelion on the battlefield. And neither of us could really remember or explain how the combo worked. No, opponent. he got me. He got well, me. Yeah, in they held us accountable. Mode. Right. Because as soon as I played it, he goes, oh, well, you have to have an outlet in order to do that. And I was like, wait, what? And so it was like, as soon as it resolved, it became a, a matter of, I think that player knew exactly how it worked. 
and it's it had been a while since I'd used the combo and so him like immediately putting me into like this mode of oh well you you got to have the outlet you got to have a Viser seer right. or else you know you can't do it insinuating you like, needed a sack outlet to kill the Triskelion and not I can shoot the Triskelion with its own ability itself. to kill it yeah. and then it comes back with Micaeus yeah. and there's your exactly. infinite combo that's just right. a little backstory on that oh how the mighty have fallen the last card on our list today is snapcaster mage and this is one of those cards that is just so good it's a two one for two with flash we know what it does. always gonna be good it's always good when it enters you get to cast something from the yard very very strong it's the card from the yard its speed is is equal to whether it's an instant whether it's a sorcery you have to do it exactly as it says but uh this is kind of dude this is this is crazy and says a lot about power creep is when decks that are super sweaty and super competitive that value redundancy are passing on snapcaster mage that said it is an amazing amazing commander card it is going to give you pretty much two ofs of all of your favorite spells when you're tuning a commander deck and you're trying to pick you know what impactful sorceries do i want in here what impactful instance snapcaster mage is going to give you a round two on all of those cards depending on what you pick when you use it and if you can get snapcaster mage back or or flash it or anything like that well then you're living the dream this card being down at around the 20 dollars range is just nuts whether you're you're getting the ultimate masters version whether you're getting the uh, innistrad version modern masters 2017 they all do the same thing and they're all pretty much hovering around the same price Completed listings of the Innistrad version around 17s right now. This is a card whose price has halved over the last year. November this time last year, you're looking at $40, $45 for a copy of Snapcaster Mage. But with the decline in the economy, with the decline in consumer confidence, this one has taken a hit. And like Jake said, unless you're running like a really hardcore creature-based blue deck, uh, you're going to want the Snapcaster Mage in there alongside your sorceries and instance to get you some extra value. Statistics show that 70% of you that watch this video are not subscribed, and it would just mean the world to us if you would click that little button. That's right. You can get involved by going over to Patreon. You can help us out by using our TCG affiliate link. You could join the Discord. All of that information is in the description of the video. You should go check it out. Check that pinned comment. We've got direct links to purchase these over at TCG Player. If you purchase through that link, gives a little kickback to the channel, costs you nothing extra, and helps us grow this into our full-time job. If those are our picks for great pickups in the month of November 2022. Let us know what cards you've noticed are great pickups right now down in the comments below.